president of the Club de Madrid, it's my, uh, deep, my great pleasure to welcome you, all members, speakers and participants, to our 10th anniversary annual conference on digital technologies for 21st century democracy. I wish to start by thanking our partners for making this event possible, starting with Sheikh, the Sheikh Fahad Al Salem Al Sabah, President of the Center for Dialogue Among Civilizations, who unfortunately has not been able to join us today, as well as the regional government of Madrid, Telefonica, Hyatt, Regency, Colum, Rockefeller Foundations, Google, Samsung, Microsoft, McKinsey, JDF Suez for their important support. And I also want to thank our media partners Prisa, The Huffington Post, Excelsior, and Open Democracy for helping us share what is discussed here today and tomorrow. Lastly, I wish to thank Michael Bloomberg, Mayor of New York, for honoring and joining us at this opening ceremony in this always impressive city. In 1989, the world started witnessing in astonishment the collapse of the communist system and the start of the so-called third wave of democratization. The world seemed much smaller thanks to information technologies that allowed faster means of communication and information, and we began to realize that science and technology opened infinite uh, opportunities for improving our quality of life and the health of our planet. planet. Then, 10 years later, 10 years ago, the world had to wake up to face an unknown reality for which it was not, not prepared. The ominous shadow of terror and insecurity struck, and we found a new faceless enemy with no ter territory, no flag, and with the ability to use many of the same technologies to wreak massive destruction and foment chaos. It was against this backdrop of an increasingly complex world, blossoming democratic and scientific opportunity on the one hand, and uncertain new threats and challenges on the other, that we founded the Club de Madrid, which was a bold commitment to strengthening democratic leadership and values around the world. We work by providing peer-to-peer -peer and shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder strategic advising by former world leaders and current world leaders. We exploit the global profile of our members to raise awareness of major issues that can strengthen our democracies. Over these last 10 years, we have pursued national and multinational initiatives on social cohesion, women's political participation, energy and climate change, religion and politics, security and terrorism, global governance, and various country-specific institution-building processes from Haiti to East Timor, to mention only two out of many, many countries. For the members of the Club de Madrid, who voluntarily contribute their time to this mission, it's a matter of great pride to see how our efforts have contributed to the improvement of the quality of democracy from the national to the global level. Today, we stand at the threshold of unprecedented democratic opportunities enabled by technology. The social media-driven movements we see taking shape around the world this year are but one example of how technology is eroding the boundaries between government and those who are governed. We are here to educate one another through dialogue and debate about how networked and our technologies might fundamentally change what we mean by democracy for the 21st century. Over the next two days, we will address the future of our key democratic institutions, the state, civil society, and the media. Just as music, publishing, and other commercial industries are transforming, so too must the institutions of our democracy evolve with a changing technological reality. We will hear about such recent innovations having a profound impact on participatory democracy as large-scale computational tools. The explosion of big data might enable us to deepen our understanding of the world around us, potentially avert crisis, and make better decisions. We will learn about collective intelligence technologies, 
also sometimes called social media, that allow us to work together in new ways, heralding an era in which citizens and the state work together to solve problems collab collaboratively. Whether in long-standing or fledgling democracies, digital de governance is only in its infancy. Many government institutions are only just getting online. Even those that had long used technology are just discovering how openness enabled by technology might help them work more effectively and more democratically. There are many conferences about politics and yet more about technology. By convening expert technologists and experienced politicians, as well as business leaders, social scientists and journalists, we hope to develop a nuanced picture of how to realize the long-term vision of a more innovative and participatory democratic uh, culture, despite the short-term realities of electoral democracy. For me, this conference will have, have been a success if it accomplishes three things. First, the discussion, whether in formal sessions or in the hallway over the next two days, should give each of us understanding of how technology is impacting democracy across the globe. Second, I hope that through our conversation we each come away with clearer vision of the kind of democracy we want to achieve and the impediments to such innovation. And finally, we should each strive to identify at least some concrete ideas, principles or projects each of us can champion, whether individually or collectively. Used well, digital like biotechnologies have the potential to improve human flourishing and quality of life for people and the planet. They can also transform our institutions for the better. I'm sure we are all anxious to listen to our speakers and to our participants at this conference and to learn from new ideas they will be presenting us. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us.